is a big boy. Woo. Is my my makeup okay? What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. If you're new, um, if you're already subscribed, welcome back. In today's video, I will be doing a bike review on the Trek Roscoe 8. Now, I've already previously done a review on this bike when I first got it, but I've had the bike for two years now, so I figured I'd let you guys know what I think after owning the bike for two years now. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Here she is. All right, she is beautiful. Okay, so first I'm gonna start off with some issues that I've had. My very first issue that I've had with this bike um, was my forks. Now, there was a little bit of an issue between the high pressure chamber and the low pressure chamber in these bad boys, which uh, I don't know a lot about what goes on inside these, but they were just bottoming out the whole time. Luckily, it was under warranty through Trek, so I was able to get those uh, new forks pretty promptly through the uh, uh, Trek uh, store. And another issue that I had pretty early on was the, where is it? Oh, right there, right in front of my face. <laughs> the uh, the really hanger here, which um, I guess they break off quite often. Uh, it's a, a little piece that screws into the frame, which I guess is good because if it was built into the frame and you bent that thing, you bend it back and then you bend it again, you bend it back. You do that so many times, eventually it's just gonna fall off so that's pretty good that they have that on but a uh, common issue with that is it just kind of either bends or, or snaps quite often and then more recently I had an issue with my cog or cassette rather um, it was bent supposedly now this was a problem that I've had for a while uh, unfortunately it was outside of the uh, warranty when it was brought to my attention, but early on it was uh, very difficult to just fully dial in the um, the uh, the gears. And I figured, you know, it's a it's a 12 gear bike, and it's all in the back there, so it might be difficult to find the range of all the gears being perfect. It was either really good in the low and kind of skippy in the high or really good in the high and kind of skippy in the low which is pretty annoying so the last time I brought my bike in they brought to my attention that it was slightly bent and after I got it all tuned up it was just perfect ready to go so that was a little aggravating that the person who used to work on it didn't quite find that right away I wish I knew more about bikes otherwise I probably would have found it myself but I don't so here we are and the sprocket, I don't know if you guys can see, is just worn a little bit. You can see these, the teeth there, they're supposed to be pointing straight or pointing a little down towards where I put the pressure on the uh, chain. So um, definitely due for a new sprocket here soon. So, but I mean, I think that's pretty normal. And overall throughout the whole bike, those are the only issues that I've had. All right, let's dive into some things I really like about this bike. The number one thing for me is the tires. They really grip the trail so nice. I like nice fat tires. Now this is obviously, you know, you can get smaller tires. And I don't know if they get much wider than a 2.8, which I'm sure they probably do. Someone else probably knows that. Definitely not me. But these uh, tires just grip the trail so good. And I am tubeless right now, which uh, everyone says it's a good thing to do. So I did it. And I would love to say that I love it, but I don't know the difference. I don't know why they do it to avoid pinch slats maybe, but it's been great. It's been awesome. A little tubeless riding out there. I just feel magical when I'm riding the trails with no tubes, it's pretty awesome. Another thing that I like about this bike would be the brakes, the hydraulic brakes. Um, they are Shimano, not exactly sure on particular specs, but you can find that on the Trek website. They just stop on a dime 
and I've had it for two years now. I was on a 10 month deployment, so the, what, there was a significant period where I was not riding this bike. But when I brought it in for the tune up, they said it didn't have to be bled, which I mean, I'm not sure how often you have to do that, but they said they were operating perfectly fine. So that's pretty sweet. One less thing to spend money on. This uh, SRAM derailleur is another thing that I really like. I hear a lot of mixed things about this, but I haven't had any issues with it. I go very fast downhill, straight up to a big tough climb. So it's been able to uh, perform up to my standards. So I'm very happy about that. So I would say that is another good thing. Good job, good job derailleur. And another thing that is entirely cosmetic is the color. It is so beautiful. I love it. And they match these pedals. It's so nice. I'm not sure if they make this uh, color with uh, the newer versions. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But it is beautiful. I love this. I would love to paint my car this color. But I don't have a cool car. So why am I going to paint in a cool color if you don't have a cool car, right? This is my first time with a dropper post. Pretty sweet. I'm so happy this bike has dropper posts. It's been working wonders on the trail. So that's another thing I really like about this bike. And overall, I would say I give this bike a thumbs up. Now, I'm sure the newer versions have a little different specs, but as a whole might be pretty similar. Not sure, but I really like it. And it's held up really well for two years. And I ride this thing pretty hard, so. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you find this video helpful or if you just like this video in general, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. Until then, I will catch you guys next time.